What's up, good people? I hope you're doing extremely well. And if not, I hope that we can change that in the coming moments. Um, as we talk about health and money to help us have the best life possible. Today, though, I want to talk about or I want to answer a question that I received uh, recently uh, from a friend, actually. And it was, is financial freedom dying? And I think what he was really talking about was the movement of financial freedom and how, you know, in the past, you know, I guess less than a decade, a lot of people have adopted this mantra of financial freedom and just went after this ideal of financial freedom um, in a similar way, in a similar way based on what was capable. And I want to talk about that um, portion or that side of financial freedom. And is that something that has reached a point of decay in our current society? Um, in people's minds and are people really still seeking financial freedom and what does that look like for people right now um, well first I think we need to talk about what financial freedom is in that sense and um, this can take on many shapes and forms and I think to answer this quickly without going down a large a large rabbit hole um, I think we have to talk about the creation of financial freedom mechanisms you know what what has kind of created this perfect storm of seeking financial freedom in the way that we have um, at large in the past decade or so um, and I think at the forefront of that is really technology you know technology being kind of a driver of allowing people to have alternative ways of creating wealth creating understanding of uh, their finances and just creating mechanisms that change the way that we conduct ourselves uh, from a financial standpoint. Um, I think a lot of that has happened through, you know, things like YouTube, through things, you know, like social media and um, just even an understanding of the stock market and all of these different investment assets, you know, such as real estate that people didn't really have a large access to or access to at large um, years ago. You know, there was a time when most people didn't really think about investing in things like that or, you know, they knew about it, but it was something that wasn't for them. It was something that was more for the elite. And, and I know, you know, even when with jobs and things like that, you know, people sought out having jobs and you know, you invest on your on your job or you have, you know, a 401k or whatever the investment vehicle is that you get with your job. I know those things have always been, um, you know, prevalent in the workplace, but just at large, you know, people's understanding of how does wealth work? How does investing work? How does, you know, how do these things translate into um, my financial freedom and my financial education? And I think those things, the awareness of those things happened in the past decade for a large amount of people, you know, with, you know, people under getting information through the Internet and people getting information in a way that really talked about finance and the understanding of finance and, and that whole movement kind of growing out of the dissemination of education about finance. And I think what has happened in recent years is that people have taken that information and created a lot of systems that, you know, some work and some don't, you know, that generate revenue for people or just understandings of how to create passive income and things like that. And because it was so enticing, I think the movement grew really quickly. I think the notion of, you know, quitting your nine to five and being able to um, live off of your passive income and, you know, be wealthy and all of those things. I think that is very enticing for a lot of people or has been a very enticing for a lot of people. But I think a lot of people really didn't know or didn't really understand the upfront work involved. And still, I think that's still a, a mystery for a lot of people. And I think what is happening is that as people are coming off of the high of hey, I want to be financially free and I want to attain financial freedom and I can do it in these three quick steps. I think as people are coming off of the high of that and realizing that there are really some fundamental things and fundamental 
um, understandings that they need to be had and need to be enacted in their lives and just habits and habitual behavior. I think once people, I think now that people are coming to that point in that realization, you know, a lot of the movement towards financial freedom in the sense that we have seen it in the past decade is going away. And I think there's still a quiet migration towards um, something similar to that understanding of financial freedom. But I think, you know, at large that that initial let's run full speed towards this, you know, I think that initial understanding of it is is morphing and changing into a deeper understanding of what needs to be done. And um, I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing that people are starting to really see things for what they are. Um, I, I am grateful that the dissemination of the information that has happened in the past decade um, or longer, um, I, I'm grateful that those things have happened because they are allowing a lot of people who wouldn't have had that information um, to see some things or some or have some understandings that they would not have had. So. Uh, me included. I did not grow up in a community or a household that, you know, really talked about finances a lot that way. And a lot of things I did have to learn um, as I got out into the world and made mistakes. And I think um, the great thing about the time that we're living in is there's a shorter path to understanding, you know, the ramifications of your actions and actually having mechanisms in place to correct those things without you know going too far down in the wrong direction and that's if you if you're willing you know if you're willing you know that is the other component of it is you know with that information you have to be willing to take those steps and willing to you know really embrace financial literacy and, and embrace you know your your own financial freedom or your own notion of what financial freedom is and that leads me to my next point i think you have to really clearly define what financial freedom means for you. And I think everybody has to get to that point at some point of saying, OK, what what do I really value about financial freedom? What does it mean for me? You know, am I someone that needs to have a certain salary um, while I'm working or, you know, I need to be um, able to pay my bills? Am I someone that needs to have, you know, money saved up, you know, whatever those things are or being able to invest? What are what are those things, those vehicles? What are those things for you? You know, really determine what those are. And I think once you get to that place of making that determination, you can really start to craft the plan for your life for financial freedom. Um, and because because it really is that it is, you know, a plan of action that and a lifestyle that you have to adapt to and move in every day, you know, um, and that's the mistake a lot of times people make when they're talking about financial freedom is, OK, I'm going to read this book or I'm going to get this course or I'm going to, you know, have this one understanding and I'm going to be financially free after I have that one understanding or do these these five or three things. And I think um, that is the misconception that is causing the dying of the movement of financial freedom. Um, but I think what evolves after that, what I think co what comes next is a true understanding and a true deep um, understanding of the lifestyle that has to be adapted. And then there's the there, and then after that, there's the decision. You know, you can make that decision whether that's something that you want to do. You know, do you want to embark on all of the steps that it's going to take to get there or do you not? Or do you want to say, hey, I, I'm, I'm not going down that path because I think it's too much for me. So I think, you know, that's a great time that we're living in. Um, we're living in a time of decision and we're living in a time that we can you know, make those decisions and make them quickly with information and with the right information. Um, and there's never in my in my life, there's never been a time like this. And there's there's never been a time like this. So I think it's a great thing, um, even inside of, you know, all of the fear and all of the, the spreading of fear and all of, you know, the bad things that have transpired in this decade. And, you know, all of the bad things that are to come, you know, 
even among all of those things, I think there is still a silver lining of awareness and choice. You know, we are aware now, more aware as a people, as a nation, you know, as a world than we've ever been. We are aware of each other. We are aware of, you know, our finances. We're aware of our health. You know, we're aware of all of these things that are driving the lives that we are living. And I think it's very important that we don't close our eyes and dismiss it at this moment. I think we should embrace that, you know, and really understand that this is a moment. This is a moment that we're living in where we have that understanding and we have not only the understanding, we have mechanisms and tools at our fingertips that we can make decisions based on that understanding that really dictate change, really dictate change and really dictate what is going to happen for not only the generations we're living in now, but our future generations. And um, that power is very close at hand for everyone, even on an individual um, basis and at large. And, you know, I would tell anyone right now, um, the most powerful thing you can do is learn. You can take this opportunity right now to learn all you need to know um, about anything that you want to progress in. You know, if you want to be a successful, you know, accountant, if you want to be a successful um, entrepreneur, anything that you want to be, there's rarely been a time where education is free. You know, there's so much free education out there. Um, and yes, you have to sift through, you know, some of the fog sometimes. You have to sift through and find things that are real, but it's out there and it's at your fingertips. And you, if you want to take the initiative, if you can take the initiative, you should. You should, you know, really seek out. And even if there are things that aren't free, you know, that are available, the things that you can learn that you have to pay for, invest in yourself. Invest in those things. You know, this is the time that is so important that you invest in learning and becoming who you want to become, whether that be for your finances, whether that be for your health. Learn those things. Become the person that you want to become and be better for it. I hope this has been extremely helpful for someone. And until we talk again, I wish you health, wealth and freedom.